How's it going fam? Erica back with the essentials and today we're going to do an EDC update and a lifestyle update slash diet update that I think you guys will find really interesting. Let's get into the EDC update first and that's actually going to flow into the rest of the video. So what I've been carrying lately, same as usual pretty much with one slight change, but the pair of three has been the blade lately. This one is in S45VN with the blacksmith finish Lynch Northwest clip. Just loving this. I haven't really found a need to uh, get it out of my pocket. I'm doing a little bit of testing with the clip and with the steel, so this one has just been great so far. I will say I've had a pair of three with this steel before, and I feel that this edge is probably burnt. My other one I don't think was, and I'm talking about like coming from the factory. When I had my old pair of three in S45, the edge that it came with was actually really nice. Not to say that this one isn't nice, but I just can tell it's a little crispy, it's a little burnt, so I'm excited to, to do a sharpening with this and get down to some non-burnt steel or non-fatigued, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, this has been really nice so far. Still haven't found the need to switch out these three things at all. I'm doing the Streamlight Macro Stream. In the winter here in New Hampshire, I like to carry a larger flashlight with a higher output and lumen count just because it gets dark here at like 3.30 once you start to get into the deep winter months. So a, a nice good flashlight is a necessity and essential. Still doing the five inch pliers from Knipex, Knipex, Nipex, Nipex. Kinepex. Are we ever going to know? Probably not. But still rocking those. These are just so, so handy. Actually, um, I really suggest that everyone tries these. If you, if you live a lifestyle where you tinker with things or just use your tools a lot, even outside of maybe a blue collar job, these are really incredible. Nicole encountered a situation the other day where she was trying to take her heating system apart and it took square bits but you couldn't get a drill into such a tight space so she ended up needing to take like pliers to hold the bit and to turn it because there was th you couldn't get a screwdriver in there you couldn't get a drill in there but you could get like very slim pliers holding the bit to turn it and that worked and it's like you don't even realize how important and useful these pliers are until you have them because sometimes they just take the space of other tools that simply cannot always do the job so these are a lifesaver cannot recommend these little pliers enough i've been testing them for almost four years now the same the same pair they're incredible and then super tinker from victorinox another essential i use every single tool on this even yesterday at work, we had to take all of the security cameras down to reset them and reset them up for um, like a new a new thing we were doing. But anyway, uh, they had to all be reset with that little tiny pinhole thing. And sure enough, got to use my little Swiss Army knife pin to do the job of resetting when nobody else had anything. You don't realize how useful a pin is until you have to take a SIM card out or reset a camera or something. It's just, it, these Swiss Army knives with the little pin holder right in there. Hopefully you can see that little tiny pin hole. Crazy, crazy useful. So, love that. Haven't changed the wallet either, of course. I've mentioned this probably 500 times on the channel. Fail safe goods wallet. You just can't beat it. I don't think I will ever change this out. Now, I am carrying a fixed blade again. And this is going to flow into the rest of the video. So the past couple days I've been carrying the Bark River PSK EDC in S45 VN blade steel. 
This is a tiny little fixed blade knife. Rides on my belt in a really nice sheath that it came with. Let's just do a quick size comparison with the Para 3 for scale. You guys know how small the Para 3 is. So the Para 3 is actually a little bit longer than the Bark River PSK EDC. Really nice. So this is a tiny little fixed blade knife. Very slim. Very useful. There are two reasons that I'm carrying this particular fixed blade right now. Uh, number one, testing. So I have not tested this model yet, and I have not tested S45VN from Bark River yet. So I really wanted to put these two together so that we have a Spiderco CPM S45VN and a Bark River CPM S45VN to put head to head and see how they uh, kind of compare and contrast because we all know that Bark River is kind of like a semi-custom operation. Uh, they also have a lifetime warranty. They are all convex ground. So just a kind of a really neat comparison with these two, in my opinion, to see how this steel performs with a different grind, with a different treat from a different company. I think it's really cool. But uh, the primary reason I have switched to carrying a fixed blade as well is because I have started a very interesting diet. I am eating a predominantly carnivore diet lately. I've been playing around with that. And basically the fixed blade is to cut my steaks, especially at work. And um, I'm eating a lot of meat. So I like having kind of like a work knife to do the dirty, grimy work of everyday carry. But then I like to also have a blade that I can do food prep with that is a little more like sterile, I guess you could call it. This one gets washed. This one is used for food. And um, I would not be doing anything gross with this, right? Because I'm not going to I'm not gonna carry a steak knife around with me or in my backpack or anything if I can just have one on my person. So let's go a little more in depth about why I'm doing a carnivore diet because I know you are all screaming right now, Erica, we thought you were crazy. Now I think you're absolutely insane. I know, I am. Let me explain once Zaya stops jingling. Also, sorry for this weird glare like right here. The sun is at an odd spot right now. Okay, sweetheart, thank you. Um, okay, let me explain what happened with this. So, I am a huge believer in any animal's body telling them what they need nutritionally speaking, okay? Now, I'm not talking about um, someone who's addicted to sugar where their brain tells them you need to drink Coca-Cola and eat Snickers all day. That will make you happy. That will that will keep you alive. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a, a, a normal average person that is healthy with minimal to no health issues or, or an animal, a dog that is healthy with minimal to no health issues, right? Um, I believe that our bodies, if in the right mindset, tell us what we need to be healthy, right? So for dogs, typically, if you were to put down like Purina crap chow and a raw, you know, a raw food meal, a lot of dogs that have been filmed with these options will go for the raw food first. Uh, that's all over YouTube. They do like these little food test things and it just goes to show that our dogs are indeed carnivores. Uh, humans, we also have eyes on the front of our heads. Yes, over, you know, infinite amounts of years. Uh, our canine teeth, we still have them, but they're much more like small and a little bit filed down now. We're omnivores. We can eat basically anything. But in essence, if we listen to science, our eyes are still on the front of our heads. We are still predators. Prey animals have the eyes on the sides of their heads to see a range around them to keep them safe. We are hunters, just like dogs, cats, lions, bears. Eyes on the front of our heads. Um, until my eyes are on the side of my head, I will be eating meat. And now that I'm living in a camper, it is... 14 degrees outside right now. It is freaking cold. I am outside all the time. The campers are a lot of maintenance. Switching over water, switching over propane, exercising dogs, uh, putting siding on the campers. I'm outside in the cold a lot and at my job because my, 
my job is to walk the dogs whether it's cold or not and my body started to tell me that I really was craving a lot of meat uh, over the past week winter's really setting in and I just was constantly craving meat not carbs not sugar like animal products animal meat and you know i'm like i said i'm a huge advocate for listening to our bodies and doing things appropriately but you know just listening to what our bodies are asking for but you know just to take that extra step i did start doing some research and uh, i was completely i had no idea about the carnivore diet or the lion diet beforehand but i just decided to on youtube and on some forums and stuff research like uh is a carnivore diet healthy or can you live off of a carnivore diet or anything and sure enough all of these crazy stories and videos and podcasts and research um formats popped up about carnivore diets and one in particular called the lion diet which we're going to get to in a few minutes but um a lot of videos on the carnivore diet people that you guys all know like joe rogan and the buff brothers and stuff like that all of these people um jordan peterson michaela peterson uh a lot of people have done this so-called carnivore diet and have had incredible results with it. So I really, I, I really researched a lot. There was one day where I spent like eight hours listening while I was working and stuff, listening to podcasts uh, from doctors and from people who have done this. And um, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to try it and see what happens. So I have been eating like 95% animal products, really meat, but some other animal products as well. Uh, a little bit of fruits and veggies, no carbs, but literally just a small handful of fruits and vegetables. And then all the rest is like raw cow's milk, steak, uh, ground beef, chicken, eggs, just pure animal products. And I just wanted to kind of share my experience real quick so that we can record it as I move forward because maybe it would help other people. I am not a doctor. I am not saying that you should do this without doing research. I'm just sharing my experience. But um, within the first couple days, the mental clarity that I have experienced is insane. I don't know if this will make any sense to anyone, but my my brain inside like my head feels like a cool breeze <laughs> it's like refreshing i notice that on carbs i kind of feel like i have like cotton candy fluff in my head sometimes I'm like i'm so foggy and dazed and, and tired if i eat carbs and with this you know almost pure meat diet the mental clarity that i have and the emotional stability that i have is really odd it's something i'm not used to and i feel like i can articulate myself better and my emotions are way more controlled and don't get spiked as easily. You guys know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, that my emotions t can be very... I can get triggered pretty easily. <laughs> We've been through a lot of stuff on this channel. But very uh, cool, calm, and collected lately on this diet. My brain feels extremely clear. Just to give an example... Um, the other day at work, out of the blue, one of the dogs started to have a grand mal seizure while I was at work and I was the only one there. If that had happened a year ago, I probably would have started crying and have, you know, I would have had like a meltdown and I wouldn't have even known what to do. And I actually somehow kind of like knew what to do. I just like held her on her side. I called uh, the person that runs the my workplace. Uh, the seizure lasted, you know, six minutes, and then she went to the ER after once she was all good, but, um, I was, like, able to just kind of get myself together in that situation and deal with it in a better fashion than I would have, like, a year ago, per se. So that was really interesting. Um, but my body feels, like, out of this world better. Not that I was eating poorly before. Um, carbs have never settled well with me so i was doing like a gluten-free diet but still eating gluten-free carbohydrates for for quite a while and i'm noticing that like actually just taking all carbs out whether gluten-free or not works way better for me but um yeah i can't believe how good i feel energy is like through the roof sleeping way better i'm not eating nearly as much as i was before um my joints feel 
like almost 100% better. Some of you guys might not know this, like people that are close to me will know this, but I've struggled with some health issues my whole life. Uh, a couple people have asked about this scar right here on my neck. That's from a surgery I had when I was like seven. My lymph nodes were like so swollen and blown up. I had to get them like quickly removed, but your lymph nodes, you know, in your armpits and your neck and whatever, those are what fight off illness. That's what kind of like keeps you going and keeps you alive. And I had to take, take all of them out pretty much on in my neck. So throughout my childhood, I was sick constantly. Like I remember I was not in school as much as I should have been. I was sick all the fucking time. I remember missing like every cool field trip. I was like sick for weeks and weeks. I was in and out of the doctors and the hospital my entire childhood really. I was really, really sick, honestly. Um, and my parents obviously tried to do everything they could, but I just, there was something wrong and I can tell it was never detected because I was sick my entire fucking life. But it just was never quite figured out. And once I became an adult and I was able to make my own decisions about my own food, I really started to dial in and try to figure out like what the heck was wrong with me. I also have Lyme disease. Uh, I have severe scoliosis and both of my knees are like completely jacked and one of them has cysts growing underneath it. And I had an accident as well a couple years ago where um, these two fingers were broken I'm not going to get into the specifics of that accident because it was actually like really messed up. But basically, I haven't had health insurance for many, many years. I broke these two fingers and the situation left my fingertips completely um, disintegrated, really. And the tissue was blown out of the bottoms of my fingers. Something had penetrated through both of my fingers and blown the tissue out in both of these. And my fingers were just mangled at the end. I did not have health insurance, so I could not get medical help. And I ended up contacting a, um, a, I don't know what they call it overseas. Basically a doctor, it, it, or like one step below a doctor, who was a friend of mine that is overseas through the knife community. And I was like, look, I just had a severe accident. My fingers, I'm like basically missing the tips of my fingers. What can I do to, um remedy this at home because I do not have health insurance. By the way, I do not recommend this at all. Like, please don't follow me. This is just my crazy life. But anyway, he, he walked me through it for three weeks on how to heal my fingers. Nicole and I talked with him like every day trying to figure out how to heal them. He walked me through, um, you know, cleaning my fingers and sterilizing them and letting them air out at specific times, but also keeping them wrapped to keep bacteria out. And basically I healed my fingers with no medical help, no painkillers or anything. Uh, and I do have a, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. I have a scar on that finger where the tissue had blown out completely. And there's a scar on right through here on this finger, but otherwise they, um, are almost back to normal. Uh, the only problem was after that accident, I had, I have had severe pain in this finger in particular, cause the tip of this one actually got crushed. And, um, it's been this, this brutal pain since that accident where I can't get this finger cold or actually touch it. I still cannot really touch it, but, um, this finger cannot get cold because the pain is so excruciating in the, the joint where it was crushed. And this diet has actually helped that particular issue it's crazy. So my back is feeling a lot better. It actually has like almost like basically no pain. My knees do not have any pain. And this finger is almost better. If I get it a little too cold, it starts to hurt. But it was to the point where like, if I used uh, like lukewarm water to wash my hands, the pain would like bring tears to my eyes. It has to be like hot water. And like, I'll always have this hand like in a glove or in my pocket or something like all the time because I have to keep this hand warm because the pain is just excruciating. And so I, I would always have like this hand like in my armpit or like curled up somewhere like I can't use this hand in the winter. Um, but now on this diet, the, the pain is like gone. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, all of the pain that I have suffered with almost my whole life is gone and it's only we're only like a week in and i'm not even doing full carnivore like i said i'm still eating a little bit of fruits and vegetables but predominantly animal products and it just it wow guys i cannot explain pain that i have had 
since the beginning of time for myself is gone. It's crazy. You also lean out a lot. Um, I have to eat a lot of fats because I'm already like 115 pounds. I'm 5'5 five, five and 150 pounds. So 15. <laughs> 15 pounds. 115. So I really cannot afford to lose any more weight, especially if I'm going to like stay warm this winter. So I'm eating a lot of um, fatty stuff and like uh, organic, grass-fed, pasteurized butter, whatever you want to call it. Just trying to keep those fats going for myself so that I don't lose weight. But I will say if you're overweight and you start a predominantly carnivore diet, you're going to shed weight like crazy because there are no carbs and no sugars. So you just like drop weight quick. Uh, I There's no bloating. There's no headaches. It's just, it's mind boggling the results. I'm sorry if you're a vegetarian or a vegan. This is probably killing you to listen to right now, but yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys because um, there are so many things. My skin has cleared up. Like, a lot of weird... A lot of weird things that used to happen to me are not happening anymore. And it's just very odd, uh, the differences. Like, it's... I don't know, there are so many. But, um, yeah, I feel like a million bucks. I feel like a million dollars. And, yeah, there's tons of research on this diet. There are plenty of videos. So, like, don't listen to me for your info. Like, go listen to someone educated. This is just my personal experience that I'm sharing. I am not to blame if you jump into this and get very sick or need to go to the hospital or get a bacterial infection. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you not to do it until you do your research, right? Uh, please listen to some videos. Please go watch the doctors who have researched this and done it themselves before you do it. I am not to blame. But, boy, do I feel good, guys. <laughs> I feel really, really good on this diet. So I just wanted to share that with you. But that is why I'm carrying an EDC fix blade, because I am eating steaks like a mofo. Um, yesterday, I ate three tenderloin steaks. They were They were little. They were like this big. But I ate three of them in one day, along with some other stuff, um, because I was, like, busy and working yesterday. But yeah, I'm just eating meat like a, like it's my job. But yeah, um, you know, if you, if you look into it for yourself, please just, again, do your research. Make sure you're eating quality foods. Um, I'm eating meat from the farm down the road where you can literally see the cows. I, I know the people that own the farm. I know the people that work there. They're fed very well. They are taken care of very well. I also did an order through Better Fed Beef. No, I'm not sponsored by them. They don't know who I am. But Michaela Peterson works with them. And she has a code where you can get 25% off of your order using the code MP, you get 25% off your order, and you can order um, really incredible beef through that website. They, uh, they're they doing a lot of good stuff over there and stuff. It's just incredible quality. Um, but yeah, I have that order coming in either tomorrow or Thursday. Gonna try that out. Uh, is it expensive? No, because if you think about it, you are not blowing money on processed foods. It, it's not like it's more expensive. And your stomach, I feel like, kind of shrinks and you when you're eating pure food like that, um, it just takes care of you longer, you're fuller longer, and no, it is not more expensive at all. If anything, it's cheaper, and I just feel much better. Like, it, even if it was more expensive, like, I think it's worth the price, um, to feel better emotionally, mentally, physically. Like, I mean, I've struggled with some head issues earlier in my life, um, depression and stuff like that, and even the diet has helped that type of thing, like your mental health, uh, Michaela goes into that as well on her channel, but yeah, it's just, it's, for me, it's worth it to, to feel mentally better and to feel physically better and to be able to actually live correctly, even if it were more expensive, I feel like it's worth the price to be healthy and happy and to lose weight and to feel good and to be muscular and to be, um, a useful member of society and in your own life. But that's my rant for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I will see you guys soon. Go use your shit. Go eat meat. Go eat a, uh, a steak, not a raw steak. <laughs> Some people are doing that, though. It's crazy. That's a whole different level. But uh, go eat a steak. Go live your life. I love you guys so much. I will see you on the next video. Take care.